Okay, so what are we saying? You are attacking this person with your words. You are destroying him with your words. You are cursing his identity. You are a, you are a donkey. You are a whatever. You can never say that to a person. You can tell him, don't do like a donkey. You know? But not, you are a donkey. Jesus died for human beings on the cross, not for the donkey. Hello? So don't judge the law, because the law is to protect your brother that you want to judge. And he says, when do you judge the law in James 4? When you speak bad about your brother. When you quad spreek from a car. When you talk behind that person's back. When you skinner about him. When you, when you talk negative and you judge him in a lot of things. Amen. You with me? And you're judging the law. Why? Because you know better than this book. So you judge this is not good enough. I have something to say about that guy. And I want to speak to you about that guy you know. And about that leader. And about that pastor. And about that professor. And about that. Be careful what you say. Because the law was actually there for protection. The law protects your brother from being killed by you. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Protecting your brother's wife. You shall not steal. Protecting his finances. You shall not give false witness. Protecting his integrity. You shall not covet. His wife, his Ferrari, his whatever. His Ferrari is safe. Hello? Everything of the law was also to protect one another. And that is God's heart. So as you judge one another, you stand against the law. As if you know better than this book. May God help us that we will not walk in such a way. We said at the end of the day, I need and I desire. Must we read? No, we're not going to read that. Just this one. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Verse 8 and 9. Yes, in the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait expectantly for you. In the path of your judgments. We are waiting there where you're going to put the judgment in that what is wrong. Our heartfelt desire is for your name and for your remembrance. My soul yearns for you in the night. Yes, my spirit within seeks you earnestly. For when the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness... And right standing, when will that be? Your judgment are in the earth, then it will happen. When God's judgment are on the earth, they will learn integrity, righteousness. They will learn the principles of life. Because the judgment is from the judge that you can trust. I feel safe with God as the judge. I don't feel safe. When I am the judge, or my flesh, or my opinion, or some other person with the so-called authority. But I must know that God is the judge over my life. And then I'm safe. If I walk with him, if I understand the blood, the covenant with Jesus, my recreated spirit, and I stand before him, then so it will be. Amen. It was like crap notes, off, it was not. Andre. Can you give me one also? We have a list of eight things. Where if you need a pen, just raise your hand. Everybody that don't have a pen, we give you a pen. Just give it at, uh, at the end of the service. Don't steal, steal from the church. Um, we're going to use it again. Don't worry. But everybody who's, just raise your hand if you don't have a pen. Get a paper, and we're going to vote for a new pastor. (laughs) Hallelujah. You all have it.
Pen and paper. There at the back still. Ah, is a clump. Cliff, I tell you, me also. All the students that doesn't have, that don't have pens, you have ten hours. You're supposed to write down. Hallelujah. Good. Is was the guys also stressed now. <laughs> okay, make a list of your sins. Two each. At every point. Keith, net summary. Ons nie soveel tyd vir jou nie. Okay. Point number one. This morning there was people actually starting to write when I said it. I said, whoa. I want to say this, but maybe a hundred facets of your life where you must allow the judgment of God in that area so that you can be judged now, so that you can get rid of all the rubbish now, so that you don't waste the life, so that that part of your life that is wrong can be burnt away, shaken, taken off. Amen? So that you have quality life as from tomorrow in the way that you evaluate through the word your life. Amen. The first facet is your perspective. You can write there your revelation. And that we find in Matthew 7. You can write there Matthew 7 verse 21 to 24. For you to go through it on your own, please. Um, we don't have all the time tonight. Matthew 7 verse 21 to 24. We're talking about the judgment of God. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and dri driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? This sounds like Christians. Then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, Disguarding my commands. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon it, obeying them will be like a sensible, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. And the rock is your perspective, your revelation. And it will be either the rock or if you read further, the sand. That you will build your house on the rock of the, or the sand. You can write there, you will be this. Wise builder or foolish builder? As was met my car. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid, foolish man. This is really in my Bible. This is the Amplified. So, <clears throat> so you can be the sensible, wise man or the stupid, foolish man. Write that down. I'm serious. You will choose one of the two. But it's not like I choose that. It will happen through what you believe. And the, and the key word for this first point is obedience. The key word is, will be obedience. And you will be, what's the two words? You will be? A wise, practical, sensible man. Or you will be? A stupid, foolish man. Just say that. Okay. Will you not be? Hopefully. How will you know the difference? When you understand how to hear and obey. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. Because now, yes, it's very sensible. Lord, I will hear what you say and I will just obey it. We have been out with the boat and the nets trying to catch fish for the whole night, 12 hours long, and we come back and the Lord says unto thee, go back and just throw the net on the other side of the boat. Now that sounds very logical, because all the fish always swims at the right side of the boat, never on the left side. Hello? Uh. 
But who's the wise man that will say like Peter said, Lord, this is the facts. We tried the whole night, nothing happened. But just based on your word, we will go again. And they caught all that fish that night. Absolutely stupid to the logic. Hello? But the fool and the man, the stupid man, would be the one that reasoned, come on, how can all the fish be at the right side of the boat instead of at the left side? That guy is the stupid, foolish guy. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the revelation of your life is you hear, you hear God and you obey Him. And that's it. And from that place, you will build a life on the rock. What is your perspective of life? Because according to your perspective and your opinion about life, you are living according to that perspective. I cannot make it. If I'm the man of power for the hour, if I have the image, then people will accept me. You will live according to that revelation. And whatever they tell you, you must do to feel in, to be cool, you will do that. Because that's your revelation. May God set us free. Amen. Key word is? Obedience. And God says, I don't know you. May God help us that today you will say to certain areas of your life, I don't know who is that. And what is that? That is not from God. You can look at somebody and you can say, I don't know you. I thought I knew you, but I look at your life today and I don't know who you are. Why? Because he walked away and he put his life in a place where Christ is not seen in him. May that not be part of your life. But speak to your brother, speak to your sister, your wife or your husband or whoever that you are walking a road with and you don't see how he's walking with Christ anymore. Amen? Point number two. Your time. Look at Matthew 25. You can write there Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. And that is about the wise version or the foolish version. Once again, you can be the fool or you can be the wise. Okay. The key word will be wisdom. Wisdom will protect you in how you will use your time. Verse 12 God said, I solemnly declare to you, I do not know you. I am not acquainted with you. For those who didn't have the oil, enough oil, seize the day. Are you the wise or the foolish virgin? It's all about the oil of anointing. Are you getting time with God? that he will give you that anointing so that your anointing in life will break the yoke in every day where you go. And the anointing breaks the yoke. It's not like even you. You haven't said a word yet, but when you open your mouth and you said, Spaniel is there and uh, therefore the birds are flying and the ostrich is running away from the gecko. When you open your mouth, there's anointing. Because you come from a place where God is, where he anointed you. I'm not talking about speaking lies, okay? God will not anoint that, okay? But when you open your mouth in the truth, there will be anointing. And anointing will break the yoke. And many times we are fighting against the yokes. And nothing is happening and we are tired of life. Because we are not... A wise virgin spending time with God to get that extra oil that will break the yokes in our lives that, that is not from Him. That is point number two. And the key word is? Point number three, your resources, your money. Okay, your money, your belongings, your house, your whatever. We find the Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. And we're talking about the servant, with the one talent, the two talents, and the five talents. And the problem here is we judge the leader, and that is God at the end of the day. He's a hard man, and he reaps where he hasn't sown. 
therefore I can justify myself. In my judgment, I judge the leader. I judge my father and my mother. I judge that other person in authority. Because this, judging the man in authority, judging the government, and because they are so wicked, therefore I will not pay my taxes. Because I'm not 100% with the church, I will not pay my tithe. Because I don't like that person, and I think God said to me, so into his life, but I look at that guy's life and I said, there's no way that God could have said that to me. But you do that because you will not judge your leader. You will not judge the authority. And that is, first of all, God. Amen?